Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Satyajit Patnaik. In this video, we shall be talking about a very important topic. What is the topic? You will get to know. Don't worry about it. Well, couple of days back, one of my very close friend in Hong Kong who was working with me, uh, couple of, not couple of, couple of months back, seven eight months back or one year back. I'll not be naming in which company we were working together, but he attended one of the interviews at J P Morgan. I hope everybody knows about J.P. Morgan. It's a big investment banking company, right? He attended one of the interviews for a BI role, for a senior BI specialist role. I don't really know exactly uh, whether the role's name was senior BI specialist or senior BI manager or something like that, but it was related to business intelligence. And he 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 actually pinged me, and we had a discussion a couple of days back, and I was like. Do you recall each and every question? And his answer was yes. So I told him, "Can you share your questions with me so that I can share with you all?" And here you go. I have all the questions that were asked for him. This video is specially for people who wants to transition in the field of BI or data analytics or business analytics, and for people who are having eight plus years of experience. So let's get started. I'll be talking about the various interview questions that were asked to him, and on top of that, how will I respond to those questions? I'll also tell you the answers. So stay tuned. Now this is a very common question about uh, yourself, like. Talk about one of your previous projects. So in this case, you can probably talk about any of your projects that you have done in past. In case uh, you don't have any ideas on how to showcase your projects, you can watch out my other video where I have already talked about this particular topic. Now this is a very common question which people ask in the BI roles, especially in the senior BI roles. What exactly is ETL and what exactly is ELT and what are the differences between them? Well, term-wise, ETL is basically extract, transfer, and load. Basically, extract, transform, and load. My bad. And ELT is extract, load, and transform. Now, ETL is not new. It's a very old concept. We have been doing this since quite a long time. Extraction is nothing but data extraction. You are gathering data from some source, and then you are transforming it. Let's say conversion of unstructured data to structured data, or some sort of transformations. You know, everybody knows about transformations, right? So we transform, and once your transformation is done, then you load it, load it to our database. So into your database goes your transformed data, not your raw data. Okay, so that is basically ETL, which we used to do like couple of years back. Recently in the market, we have a new concept called as ELT, very similar concept, but with a minor change. ELT is nothing but extract, load, and transform. Now, what is the difference between them? I'll have a separate video on this topic because this is a very interesting topic. You can go through that video, but I'll try to explain that in this video as well. But not with an animated way. I am creating another video with animations. Now, extract, load, and transform. Extraction is pretty much clear that we extract data, and most of the times, data could be in any format. It could be structured, it could be unstructured, it could be a JSON file, XML file, CSV files. It could be it could be anything, right? Now, extraction, and then what we do is we load it. Now, why do we load it? Basically, I'll give you one of the use cases. Let's say I'm I'm working on Azure Data Lake. So what I'll do is I'll extract the data. What I or my data engineers or the BI team. So we will extract the data and then load it into the data lakes. Maybe let's say we load it in the data lakes. So what goes to your data lake is a raw data. And then after that, let's say there is a BI team. Power BI team or Tableau team who wants to work on some dashboards and reports. Now they don't want the raw data. They can work on the transformed data. So what we do is from the data lakes we take and then transform it and put it into a database. 
So what happens here is the BI team has been given access to the database, not to the data lakes. Okay. So what is the use of data lakes? Machine learning team uses the data lakes because machine learning teams, when it comes to machine learning or AI, we usually are interested in the raw data, not in the transformed or manipulated data. That is one of the reasons why ELT is, you know, basically used these days so that we have the raw data in the data lakes and if the machine learning team asks for it we can give the access to it why does this not work in the etl process because let's say you are transforming the data and loading into the database now if the machine learning team starts extracting the data first thing is that the data is manipulated right it is transformed Second thing is that if the machine learning processes are using the database connectivity, it can consume all the storage, it can consume all the connections. In that case, your other users will not be able to access the database. So they, there are multiple use cases about it. So this is the basic difference between ETL and ELT. And if you're able to explain this, this is more than enough. But I'll have another video for that. Now the next question which was asked was uh, what is the difference between Power BI and Tableau? Now again this is something which you cannot mug up. It all depends upon your experience because you have gone for a senior BI role where you have 10, 10 years, 8 years of experience. So they will be expecting your expertise in both Power BI and Tableau. And it's it's all depends upon your experience. If you have experienced it, you will be able to say it. You don't have to mug it up. So I'll talk about two scenarios. Let's say you already know, you have already experienced. And so you can talk about your experience. What was, what, what are the difference between this and that? But I, if I was asked this question, I'll, I'll probably tell this that, uh, ease of use for sure. Tableau as compared to Tableau and power BI, power BI is super easy. I can bet that any people anyone who starts learning power bi can learn it in just two three hours or maybe four four four, four to five hours that's it when i started working on power bi i just learned it in two three hours it was super simple but then i kept on improvising myself my learning curve with tableau was not that steady as compared to power bi so if i talk about my experience power bi is a lot easier as compared to tableau power bi is a lot cheaper as compared to tableau however functionalities wise tableau has an upper edge it has more functionalities as compared to power bi on top of that what i will tell is uh, one more uh, one more feature of power bi is the natural language uh, part where ask a question that is one of the features in Power BI, which is not a part of Tableau. Integration wise, Tableau is more integratable. You can integrate it with any tool. That is one advantage of Tableau. And when it comes to the data pre-processing part, for example, in Tableau, there is one tool called as Tableau Prep Builder. Now in Prep Builder, you can do your transformations. So when you are using an original file, Probably your file is in megabytes or gigabytes. In that case, if you are extracting the file and using it, your Tableau, your Tableau could be super slow. But Tableau provides a prep builder, which is a preparation builder. In that you can use that file, do the transformation, and then your output is a hyper file, which is in KBs. So the file size is reduced from MBs to KBs. And you can use that hyper file in your Tableau and you can build your dashboard. So these are some of the differences. So if you ask me, I will definitely recommend Power BI for any kind of organization to get started with the BI part. But if you want a detailed uh, difference between Power BI and Tableau, you'll probably see one image on the screen. Now this is again a very interesting question which uh, was being asked in the interview that how can you improvise the performance of your dashboard or your report. Now I will talk about Power BI. You can pick any tool and then focus on that part. Let's say I'm talking about Power BI. Now there are multiple ways how you can improvise Power BI to make it very lightweighted so that it can give you maximum performance. 
now one of the suggestions i would like to give is implementations of tool tips in case you want to show a lot of visualizations try to restrict your number of visualizations on your page and try to have more tool tips which can be hidden so that you have multiple visualizations but what the user is seeing is just two or three visualizations and once you're hovering your mouse you are probably seeing the tooltip images or the tooltip visuals so tooltip is very important drill throughs are also very important to improve the performance on top of that take as much data that is required for your dashboards for example what people do is if you're building a dashboard on two tables why do you have to extract more number of tables into your power bi and make it very heavy there are some scenarios where you can you, you don't have the necessity to create a new column you can use x functions like sum x or average x that is also one of the advices apart from that one more advice which should be done it does not impact performance drastically but it is a you know best practices for power bi is that we should create measures in a separate query let's say you have five queries and you are creating multiple measures under query 1 query 2 query 3 so tomorrow if you are trying to search what are the measures that has been created it could be messy uh, so it's always recommended to have measures under a separate blank query so these are some of the tips which will definitely impact the performance so the next question is area chart versus line chart so this is again a very basic question but i would like to see what you think about this particular question write down in the comment section below what is the difference between area charts and line charts and in which scenario you have to use line charts and in which scenario you want to use area charts if you are not able to answer i'll try to come up with an answer in the one of my next videos the most important thing to consider when you are building a dashboard is uh, uh, it all depends for example you are working on a customer so you have to always think about the customer's theme let's say the customer theme colors are bluish and whitish your dashboard should be able to uh, you know impress them so you should always create a dashboard according to your client's needs and let's say it's your internal project then you have to you know do dashboards in your company's theme so it all depends because what we are building is not for ourselves we are building dashboards for our higher management for our clients so it has to be uh, for them right so always take feedbacks take inputs always uh, try to follow the best practices in order to have a very high performance on your dashboards and take feedbacks try to discuss or try to involve them in every iterations let's say you are working on a dashboard let's say you have timeline for 2 weeks don't wait till 2 weeks try to have an intermediate meeting maybe at the fourth day or the fifth day or after end of first week try to take inputs and try to improvise them so this is what i usually you know i usually do so I I think that's it for this question in case you have something else to answer you can write down in the comment section So the next questions were not technical they were into the managerial roles because it was a senior BI role so what they asked was about some of the management skills how do you manage your team what was your previous experience managing team and this is one of the questions which was asked that how did you Did you come across a crisis before and if yes how did you manage it so uh, if i would have been asked this question see this question answers will vary from person to person it all depends on your personal experience you can directly relate to one of your experiences and then talk about it but try to be honest don't try to cook up these stories because uh if you be honest that will help you out i, I don't want to fake in one interview and then you know get the job offer so if i am asked this question i'll probably tell them that unfortunately i haven't uh, so i i'll talk about one of the crisis situations which i uh, handled but that time i was not a manager when i have managed teams 
I have never faced a crisis because I usually have you know scrum meetings. We usually discuss our ongoing activities every day, and we talk about what's going to be our next day's work in case my my team or anybody in my team who is who who is going for a vacation or for sick leaves then i try to manage internally because i also come from a technical background so whenever there is a requirement i also pitch in and try to make sure that everything is all right so in my managerial career i have never faced a crisis but yes i have faced crisis in one of the scenarios in my early stage when i was in site i was in jakarta indonesia where i was handling uh i i was uh, basically uh, what do you say i was uh, representing my team in uh, on site and there was a failure production failure in that case we basically worked overnight till 6 am 7 am so it was like extended 40 hours of work of course we took some gaps took some breaks but we did that and finally we try to fix the problem so this is one of the crises that we have handled similar crises we also handled in the same organization for another client which is vodafone where uh, again something went down we, we were in production there was a new deployment and something broke down and again we had to work 48 hours consecutively wearing our uh, you know i mean it was very pathetic scenario but we had to work for 48 hours and try to solve it out so in your crisis situations you have to analyze that do you need an external help if yes always ask for external help from your managers or from other teams if nobody can help you out let's say this is one of the critical scenarios where any other team cannot help you so try to then in that case you have to put extra efforts and try to fix it up so this is how you manage crisis but this answer is completely based on my stories you have to come up with your your experience that you had in past so this is all about this particular topic and i hope you enjoyed the video and this is how a real interview happens and interview questions are unpredictable it could be too easy it could be too difficult difficult as well so it all depends upon everybody's luck right so this is a real experience from hong kong itself jp morgan was hiring for a senior bi candidate and my friend had applied for it and my friend as in he's a hong konger friend and we both were working in one of our previous organizations and um, yes he tried to reach me out basically we were talking few days back on how's things going and all those things and then he told that hey I got a opportunity in JP Morgan would you like to try and all those things so I tried to ask him what were the questions being asked in the interviews so he shared me all the questions which was asked in the first round and and this is all this is this is what we discussed in this video the follow up round of his was a take home interview uh, it was a take home assignment on a small power bi dashboard which he, he completed and He, he went through and got the job offer this is all about this particular video i'll try to come up with similar videos if you like it please like share and subscribe the channel comment down one of the questions in the interview i didn't answer i would like to see your answers in the comment box and see you in the next video bye bye